John chapter number 12. We'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. And there they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Let's pray again. Father, we come, we pray for Miss Peggy's son. God, you'd touch his heart. And Lord, I pray that you'd do a work of grace in his life. God, we again pray for every need of every heart here tonight. We pray you'd help us to set in heavenly places. God, thank you for being so good to us. Thank you, Lord, for being in control. Thank you for your goodness and your grace. Now help us, Lord, to embrace the things of God. Bless those that are working with the children. Bless those that are working with the teens. I pray for those young people, Lord, that you'd undergird them and protect them and put a hedge about them, their little precious minds. Uh, and God, any that aren't saved, I pray that, Lord, when they reach the age of accountability, they'd get saved at a young age. Uh, and God, I pray you'd work in their lives all the days of their lives. Uh, and God, I pray that some of those young people would grow up and do great things for Christ. Uh, help us here in the sanctuary to embrace your truth. Lord, to yield ourselves to the Spirit of God. Help us to be vessels of honor that you might be honored by our lives. Bless now. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And amen. I want you to notice several things about this text. I want you to notice, first of all, the occasion. The occasion. We see in verse number one, six days uh, 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 before the Passover, Jesus comes to Bethany where Lazarus was who had been dead. Jesus raised him from the dead. And there they made Jesus a supper. The occasion was to celebrate what great things Jesus had done for this family. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, we ought to all have a supper for Jesus on occasion. Uh, I mean, what great things has he done for us? Uh, where would we be had he not come by the tomb we were sealed in? Uh, where would we be had he not cared for us? Uh, where would we be had he not wept for us? Uh, where would we be had he not bled for us? Uh, hey, we ought to bless him with the very best we have to offer him. Uh, we see the occasion. Now notice uh, the obligated. Look at verse number two. It says, uh, mm, there they made him a supper and Martha served. Mm -mm. Now, didn't we say this morning she was the one that was questioning him and rebuking him and fussing and arguing with him? Now look at the blessing she got for that. Lazarus is sitting next to Jesus. We find out Mary's getting ready to come in and worship Jesus, and Martha still hadn't got it. Martha's still struggling with that stone over the heart of her life. She's not worshiping, she's not feasting, she's serving. Can I say? There are some that never, ever get the relationship with Jesus. She's serving. She's cumbered about with care. She's cumbering about work. Later she goes on and says, Jesus, tell Mary to get up and come help me. No, she's doing what she came to do, worship. Not Martha. Martha didn't come to worship. You know, in a church, there are folks that have come. They come to feast with Jesus and feast by Jesus and feast on Jesus. There are folks that come to worship Jesus and to give their best back to Jesus and to adore him and love him. And then there are some who just come to work. You watch. There are some, as long as they got something to do, they're working. But look at their spirit. There's no joy. There's no love. There's no thanksgiving. It's just work. Can I say when 
getting around Jesus' work, you're, you're in trouble. Yeah, right. hmm? Amen. When all you got to do is come and work, you're in a bad spot. If you didn't come to worship, you're missing out. Yeah, right. Can I say, this is an occasion. Every Lord's Day and every Wednesday, by the grace of God, this is an occasion to come and meet with Jesus. Yeah. And can I say, you ought to come to feast or to worship. You ought to never come to work. huh? Service happens outside these doors. Amen. Not once we get in here. This is all about Jesus. Right. This is all about uh, singing about him Amen. and telling of him and putting praise upon him and worshiping him right. and adoring him for what great things he has done. Uh, not old Martha. Uh, I remember years ago, he was in an old building. I preached on the difference between Martha and Mary. I had an old bitty and all that, all that bitty he ever did was work. Well, if Martha went to work, they wouldn't have got fed. I got news for you. They didn't care about the food. No. Yeah. Right. Jesus. Huh? Huh? I'm going to tell you something. If Martha wouldn't have served, nobody would have cared. She probably got in the way. Right. I imagine every time they're trying to listen to what Jesus had to say next, and every time they're wanting to uh, uh, ask the Lord a question, she comes, she's popping something down in front of them, interrupting them. Huh? Hey, Martha, stay in the kitchen. We're enjoying Jesus, huh? Huh? She's obligated. That's some of y'all's problems. You feel obligated to come to church. Well, I didn't have to come. I got to come. It's a privilege to get to come where Jesus is. Some of you, it's work. Oh, if you ever get to where it's worship. Hmm? And then we see the occasion, we see the obligated. Now notice the ointment. Now a lot's been said over, on this ointment over the years. But notice in verse number three, then took Mary a pound of ointment, of spikener, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Now we know in looking at the ointment that it had a price. The Bible said it was very costly. Can I say that men much wiser than me have estimated that what it cost for a pound of ointment of spikener in that day was a year's wages. Now I don't know about you. Maybe you can. You can write a check for your year's wages and buy something. I can't. Matter of fact, most people, it would take a long time to save up a year's wages. Uh, uh, can I say that that ointment wasn't just something that was frivolous that they broke out on any occasion. Uh, she was saving that for something special. Uh, she was saving that maybe for her own funeral or maybe to pass down to her own children uh, that they would have something that they could uh, uh, maybe sell or uh, establish their life on. Uh, but when Jesus done what he did for her brother, uh, she could think of nothing more precious uh, uh, than to take that ointment uh, and use it for the Lord Jesus Christ in his glory. Uh, uh, it didn't matter what it cost anymore. Uh, what price do you put on what Jesus has done for you? Uh, can I say it doesn't cost anything to be saved. Uh, he doesn't pay the cost. Uh, and we ought to give him back our best and it's still not enough. Uh, we see it came with a price. We see the purpose of the ointment. She anointed his feet with it. The purpose was to show Jesus how much he meant to her. Mm, can I say that song Miss Brittany sings about that ointment? Huh? If you ever get upset because somebody's coming and pouring out some ointment on the Lord, you're in bad shape. We're going to nickname you Martha. Uh, cause there's a there's a bad spirit in you if you get upset about somebody worshiping the Lord, huh? She had a purpose, and that purpose and that ointment wasn't to come and eat with Jesus, but to get down at His feet and pour that ointment on it and wash His feet and dry His feet with her own hair. And then we see, my dear friends, the mm, profoundness of the ointment. Can I say that? The Bible says that the odor of the ointment filled the house. You see, when true worship happens, it affects more than who's worshiping it and the Lord Jesus. That's right. 
Everybody else gets in on it. When somebody truly worships the Lord, it affects other people. And when we truly worship, we'll make a difference. Serving don't make a difference. Serving gets in the way a lot of times. Uh, but when you worship, uh, it makes a difference. It touches people's hearts uh, and it touches people's lives. Uh, they know you've been with Jesus uh, and the effect is so profound, uh, it causes them to feel like they've been with him too. Uh, so we see the ointment, we see the obligated, we see the occasion. This morning we preached on mm, shedding the grave clothes. Tonight, with the Lord's help, I'm going to preach on a resurrected life. Amen. A resurrected life. And this morning, we had old Lazarus all bound up. You know, and he was anxious. He had that napkin around his face and grave clothes around his head. And he was, you know, claustrophobic and really having a tough time. But can I say, by the time you get to John chapter 12, he ain't having a tough time no more. Yeah. Uh, Amen. Uh, can I say he's enjoying life a whole lot more than he did before he went to the grave I guarantee you that's kind of what Miss Janet testified about I imagine if this last week if you had them running balloons down your arteries and clearing out a bunch of pl a plaque and you got a new lease on life you probably want to come to church today and worship a little bit yourself huh? Yeah. Uh, when you face death uh, uh, eyeball to eyeball and you walk away from it uh, unscathed, you probably have something to praise God about, aren't you? Uh, don't you? Uh, uh, but listen, uh, uh, Lazarus, uh, he's not the same as he was uh, this morning. Now, uh, hey, it's been six days. Uh, he's been going around telling everybody what great things Jesus done. Uh, they said, tell you what, let's just have a big supper and invite him over. Uh, uh, can you imagine uh, Lazarus hasn't seen Jesus since he called him out of the grave? He said, I can't wait to see him. I can't wait to put my arms around him. Tell him I love him. I can't wait to just uh, I fellowship with him and hang around him uh, and see what great things he's going to do even around here tonight. huh? He's different now. He's a resurrected life. huh? You know, I know some still had the grave clothes on when they walked out. You should have heard some of the, some of the whining people did on the way out this morning. huh? I'm thinking, you get rid of them grave clothes, you won't whine. You wouldn't believe it. Did, did I not say something about getting rid of them excuses? You wouldn't believe some of the excuses people was whining about on the way out this morning. I'm thinking, they ain't coming back tonight. They're still in the grave clothes. Huh? Yeah. Listen, why in the world do you want to stay dead? Huh? Oh, Lazarus, he ain't dead. Some of y'all come back tonight ready to worship. Some of you came back tonight and, and, and you're excited about Jesus. Why? You got a resurrected life. Amen. Huh? I got to thinking about this afternoon. Matter of fact, we went out to dinner, and I'm sitting there thinking my mind's reeling. And I'm taking notes on my phone. I got to thinking about a resurrected life. First of all, can I say this? It's an exclusive life. Jesus raised three people from the dead during his ministry. He raised Uriah, his little 12-year-old daughter, from the dead. Remember, he went, he went in, he said, oh, she's just sleeping. The morning was there, and he said, uh, she's just sleeping. They laughed at him. He walked in, took her by the hand. She got up and they walked out. They quit laughing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then there was the widow named down there. Uh, 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 she done lost her husband. Her sons died. Uh, uh, the whole town's come out for the funeral. Uh, and Jesus looks at that widow woman uh, 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 knowing now there's nobody to provide for her. There's nobody to take care of her. Uh, 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 he's concerned about her and has compassion on her. Just goes up and touches the casket and a boy comes up out of there. Are you listening? Uh, hey, and then we read this morning how Lazarus, uh, uh, Mary's grieved uh, and Jesus begins to mourn uh, and Jesus calls forth, Lazarus come forth and he comes out of the grave. Uh, I'm telling you, it's an exclusive crowd uh, that gets resurrected. Uh, the Bible says uh, many are called but few are chosen. Uh, uh, can I say uh, of all the people that's breathed God's breath in the last 2,000 years, uh, you look around, there's not many going to heaven. Uh, we're an exclusive bunch. Uh, we once were dead in trespasses and sins, uh, but praise be unto the Lord Jesus came by our way. Uh, and when he called, we answered, hallelujah. Uh, and he changed our lives, uh, resurrected us from the dead, uh, gave us life and life more abundantly. Uh, I once was blind, but now I see. Uh, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Uh, hey, hallelujah, I'm heaven bound uh, with the hammer down. Uh, why? Because of Jesus. 
trust in what he did for me. Uh, I'm telling you, this is an exclusive crowd. Not everybody gets born again. I wish they did. It's God's will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But I'm here to tell you, the Bible says hell enlarges her borders. It never says heaven gets any bigger. He went to prepare a place for us, friends. All right, can I say it? It's an exclusive bunch. Not everybody's going to heaven. Can I say this? Not everybody calls themselves a Christian is going to heaven. Can I say this? Not everybody calls themselves a Baptist is going to heaven. It's an exclusive crowd. Uh, not everybody that Jesus preached to, went, you know, he changed their life. A lot of them mocked him. A lot of them spit on him. A lot of them plotted to uh, uh, put him to death. It's an exclusive crowd to have your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. A resurrected life, it's exclusive. That's an exclusive life. Only three people were raised from the dead. He healed many sick. But only raised three from the dead. Huh? Hallelujah, being part of that chosen few. Huh? Uh, it's not only an exclusive life, it's an exceptional life. Yes, exceptional. Look again what it says here in verse number 2. There they made him a supper, Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. This is an exceptional life. We get to hang out with Jesus. Oh, yeah. Now, the world don't think that's a big deal. Because the world just thinks he was some religious guy. And they think we've done lost our minds saying he's, he's still alive. Well, I'm here to tell you, he's more than just some religious guy. He's the creator. All things were made by him and through him and by him do all things consist. Can I say, nothing was made that he didn't make. Uh, 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 he was in the beginning with God uh, and the word said that he was God. Can I say this? Uh, he's always been and always will be. He's God himself. Hey, all judgment's been committed in his hand. Uh, he's the creator. Uh, he's the judge. Uh, he's over it all. All power's given unto him. Uh, and I want to tell you, uh, uh, the one who made everything, uh, the one who's going to judge everybody, uh, the one who, who has all power, uh, hey, uh, he's my friend uh, that's sticking closer than a brother. Uh, and I have an exceptional life. Uh, I can't get a hold of the president. Uh, I can't get a hold of the governor. Uh, I can't even get a hold of the mayor. Uh, hey, there are times that I can't even get a hold of my wife or my children. Uh, but there's never a time uh, when I can't get a hold of the king of glory. Uh, hey, it's an exceptional life. Uh, hey, listen, uh, I never have to do without uh, daily love me with benefits. Uh, hey, he blesses me uh, and sustains me uh, and is good to me uh, in spite of me. Uh, I'm saying a resurrected life is an exceptional life. Uh, Amen. Can I say there's no life better than the Christian life. Mm. Every life has bumps and bruises peaks and valleys but none of them has God going with them through it other than the Christian life it's an exclusive life it's an exceptional life can I say this and it's an external life it's visible people can see whether or not you've been with Jesus they did with Moses they did with Peter Peter's down there trying to tell folks he didn't know Jesus. And they keep saying, yeah, he's one of them. He's one of them. Even when you try to not be one of them, it tells on you. Uh, you can't blend in with the crowd because you're not of the crowd. You're in this world, but not of this world. Are you listening? It is external. It's an external life. It is visible. You can always tell when folks have been around Jesus. Uh, their speech is different. Uh, their walk is different. Uh, uh, their uh, uh, decisions are different. Uh, their desires are different. Uh, hey, uh, they don't have the smell of grave clothes on them anymore. Uh, hey, they got the smell of glory on them. Uh, there's just something about them. Uh, they're external. You can always tell that crowd that's been with Jesus, huh? Listen, I don't know much, but I know when he's around and when he's not around. Uh, I, I, I don't know much, but I know when I got on that one point this morning, there was something tightened up in here this morning. You know why? They didn't want to hang around Jesus. Just give me that crowd that does. huh? Huh? Just give me that crowd that wants to hang around him. 
That's my crowd right there, huh? Listen, it's an external life. Huh? Didn't they not say in Romans chapter number 10 that those that believe on him with their heart, the Bible said that they would not be ashamed? You show me somebody that says, well, I'm a Christian, but I don't want anybody to know about it. They're not a Christian. If you've ever been to Calvary, you won't tell everybody about it. Do you think Lazarus uh, went around saying, yeah, I'm him. No. They say, weren't you dead? Yep, but let me tell you what happened. Jesus came by. Huh? And I ain't dead no more. You want to touch me? Uh. Uh. How do you combat and argue that Jesus did work when a guy's standing there? When you went to his funeral, when they threw him in the hole, four days later he comes out saying, anybody got anything to eat? Uh. I'm telling you, it's an external life. It's visible. People can see. They may not like it. They may not want what you've got. But they can't deny that you've been with Jesus. Huh? Brother Phil was talking in Sunday school. Said he got saved. He went back to work the next day. He started naming some guys. I think he said one of them's name was Big Chuck. And one of them's name was Knucklehead. And one of them's name was... I don't know what all the names are. He went back to work. And they said, you're different. Huh? You know why they knew that? Because he'd been with Jesus. Hmm. Uh, listen it's external can I say this about a resurrected life it's exciting it's exciting I mean we're only going to heaven what's not exciting about that huh I've seen people get excited about going to Disney World. I've been there. It's wonderful, huh? It's a small world after all. Hallelujah, huh? But I'm here to tell you, I'm going to the glory world. What's not yeah. to be excited oh, yeah. about, huh? Now, I don't know what all's going to happen between now and then. And there are some days that you got storm clouds. Uh, and there are some days you don't know if the roller coaster is going up or going down. But I want to tell you something, just something about hanging out with Jesus. It's a thrill ride of a, a ride of a life. Listen yeah. to me. It's exciting. Amen. I can't wait to come to church and see what he does next. Yeah. Hmm? You never know what he's going to do around here. Huh? I had no idea when I rolled out of bed this morning, God was going to save 11 people over to jail. Huh? I knew what Brother Lawrence was going to preach on because he texted me. He said, oh, he told me what he saw. He said, I can't wait to go preach on this. Are you ready? So when I come down the hall, I seen he was all bubbling over. I said, are you ready? <laughs> he said, Live in me. let me tell you, preacher, oh, the God showed up, hallelujah. Uh, we got this going on. There was a man named Domingo. Uh, he was bilingual. Uh, and we had six Mexicans get saved. We had uh, five English. Hallelujah, God's God. That's exciting. Uh, but John never been to jail. As a Christian. <laughs> I went back, asked him how it was, said, I heard you had a boring service. No, it wasn't boring, it's was exciting. You just never know. It's an exciting life. Exciting to think the God of all glory cares about us. That's exciting. Huh? It's exciting. You say, man. Something terrible may happen to me this week. Yeah, but it's okay. The Lord's still on the throne. Amen. But I got news for you. Something good might happen to you this week too. It's an exciting life. I thought about this. It's an extraditing life. Extradition means to surrender. Extraditing means abandoning. What causes this life to be so precious and so exciting is when you learn the secret. And the secret is what Mary shows us and not what Martha shows us. If you're not careful, you start watching people, you're going to end up like Martha. Going through the motions and being a Christian becomes a job. But when you... Realize this life is a life that is extraditing. 
You become like Mary. You abandon yourself to the goodness of God. When you realize he's already done for you far more than you ever deserved. And it's an honor and a privilege to be able to just sit at his feet and tell him how wonderful and what great things he's done for you. Amen. Being totally abandoned to him and his mercy yes. will cause you to be like Mary. Amen. When you get to where you're full of pride and think you deserve something, where you get to where you think God don't care, where you get to where you begin to question God and indict God, you're going to end up like Martha. And most of the time that all happens because you watch other people. You come to church and you see Miss Billy's getting blessed. And you're thinking, I had a bad week. I didn't get blessed. God must not love me. God, if you love me like you love Miss Billy, you'd have blessed me this week. Okay, here's your dish rag, Martha. Huh? You start watching other people. Huh? You come to church and you've been, you've been striving to pray and striving to read your Bible. You've been faithful not to miss service. You've been faithful to do your best to tell others about Jesus. And it seems like everything in your house is breaking. Seems like your tires are wearing out on your car. Seems like just everything's falling apart. And you come in and somebody only comes to church about once a month. They'll stand up and say, boy, God's been good to me. And you're thinking, maybe I need to let a church. Quit paying my tithes. Quit being faithful. And maybe all this stuff will get fixed. Huh? Well, first of all, that person's a liar. God doesn't bless the unfaithful. That person's trying to ease their conscience. Second of all, the reason you're having a hard time is because you're striving to please Jesus and the devil hates you. Just keep pleasing Jesus because I promise you the sun's going to shine. And he is going to load your boat. And you're going to think, why in the world did I ever question him in the first place? Hmm? Uh, but it all comes to being abandoned to him whether the sun is shining or not. Listen, anybody can serve Jesus on the mountaintop. Anybody can stand up on the mountain and say, oh, God's good. But when you abandon yourself, even when you're in the valley and everything's falling apart, you'll still bow your unworthy head and say, God's still good. Hmm. let me say this lastly a resurrected life is an exalting life yes. nobody after John 11 talks about Lazarus that they don't mention Jesus raised him from the dead oh there's Lazarus the one that was dead but he ain't dead no more well he sings songs about him he's not dead no more huh get up out of the grave old Lazarus well he did huh we, we, we cannot talk about Lazarus without exalting the Lamb of God. Right. And a resurrected life is an exalting life. When people ask, how come you're so blessed? And boy, you live in a nice neighborhood. You drive a nice vehicle. You've got a good job. You can't help but say, bless the Lord. It's all because he's good to me. See, a resurrected life is an exalting life. You're always exalting and giving the credit to the Lamb of God. Can I say, thank God for a resurrected life. I know Christians have been saved, but they still live a defeated, dead life. That's got to be miserable. Yep. I don't, the only thing I can compare that to is being a Cleveland Browns fan. <laughs> huh? You know you ain't ever going to win. I mean, you know, how bad is that? That's like that team that always played the Harlem Globetrotters. Why put the uniform on? You're going to get your brains bashed out every night. The Washington Generals or something. huh? Every night. Curly Neal was going to make you look stupid. Meadowlark Lemon is going to hit a 60-foot you know, hook shot You know, every time he shot it. You know? Crazy. Why in the world would you sign up for that as a Christian? when you can have a resurrected life. <laughs> I just don't understand. I, well, Josh, I talked for a church. I said, I just can't believe people just love grave clothes. Huh? I bet they all went home and bought them a coffin to sleep in tonight. Huh? I thought Grandpa the Munsters died a couple years ago. He lived in a coffin. Huh? 
That's crazy. You ought to be alive. Alive in your spirit. Do you realize how close we are to the brink of the second coming of the Son of God? But when that trumpet sounds, don't you want to be alive? Don't you want to be living for Jesus? Don't you want to be you just excited for Jesus? Well, I want to be some dead old deadhead. Oh, boy, here he is. Huh? Listen. There are people get more excited about Obama coming to town than they do Jesus. You're in a mess. I'm here to tell you, the resurrected life is a life of joy. It's a life of second chance. It's a life that's exciting. It's just good to feel blood pumping through your, your veins. It's good to feel the Spirit of God just in your life. It's good to be able to read the Word of God. The words jump off the page. Who wants mundane and dull? You know why a lot of unchurched people don't come to church? Because all they see is grave clothes. They start seeing resurrected lives. They might say, you know what? I might need a little dose of that in my life. God help us. If you're resurrected, God help us to live a resurrected life. Listen. When you're in your close to mid-50s, things are different than they were when you was in your mid-30s. <laughs> Bill John said, yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Perspective changes. We was watching... Christian's graduation video the other night and we seen him when he's little. That sucker's bigger than me. Huh? And perspective changes. And you're on the other side of this thing. All of a sudden, your goals change. Your thought processes change. You know, things that used to be important really aren't as important anymore. Perspective changes. There are things that ought to be more important to you. And can I say that in our church life, if you're not careful, you just go through routine. And you're going to wake up one day and it's going to be too late. You ought to stop and smell the roses and enjoy life along the way. Miss Janet said, we're not promised of tomorrow. Huh? You're blessed with today. You ought to enjoy today. You don't know, you might be getting test run tomorrow. You ought to enjoy being saved and enjoy the things of God today. Wasn't that long ago, Miss May never missed a service. Including two on Wednesday. She'd sing for us every, every Wednesday morning. She loved coming to church. Now her health doesn't let her come that often. I was told Miss Barb had to get her up at 5 o'clock this morning and watch the YouTube videos just to get her excited enough to be able to get the strength enough to come to church this morning. She wanted to come. She just didn't know if she'd be able to come. We are blessed with a lot more than we give God credit for. Don't miss the water till the well runs dry. Enjoy every drink you get along the way. Praise the Lord for the bad days as well as the good days. And he might bless you with far more good days than bad days. But you ought to enjoy your resurrected life. Don't let attachments of this world steal and rob you of what Jesus has promised you, an abundant life. Enjoy your life. Enjoy being resurrected. Enjoy the fact you aren't bogged down by grave clothes. Uh, 
You say, Brother Doug, you just don't know how rough I've got it. No, but I know how rough you could have it. And you're reaping a lot better than you've sowed. So why don't you appreciate the grace of God in your life? And it just might give you the desires of your heart. Huh? God help us to not only live, but to enjoy our resurrected lives. Let's all stand, Brother Ray. Come get us on. Father, we love you. Thank you for giving far more to us than we ever deserve. God, we ain't got grave clothes on us tonight. We'll be excited. Folks ought to see a difference tomorrow on the jobs and in the community because we came to the house of God today and met with Jesus. And God, I pray you'd help your people. Some maybe still be struggling with some things. Help them, God. Lord, some are so critical and so complaining of things in their life. They ought to just be thankful, Lord. They're reaping a lot better than they deserve. Or they ought to come and just appreciate grace. Appreciate a home in heaven. Appreciate the touch of God in their life. Now, Father, blessing this invitation. Lord, you know what's needed. Oh, God, help us live in light of the miracle you gave us at salvation. Bless now. Speak to hearts. Help in this invitation. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.